Hi friends, welcome to today's session wherein we are going to be discussing about the project manager, the project manager salary trends. We will also be having a discussion on the different skills required for a project manager, the job description document, the kind of a resume project manager should have and personality traits of project manager. So this is going to be a session based on this and we have been getting a lot of inquiries and questions pretty similar to the details which are going to be captured in this slide. Hope this is going to be giving you the answers of most of these queries that you guys have been asking. My name is Yogesh. We'll start with our understanding of who's a project manager. Project manager is a person who's aware how to handle a project. And at the same time, he is also aware on what are the different constraints in a project, what he has to handle. He also has a good experience in dealing with people, dealing with team, managing the team. So we can say that the project managers are the main catalyst of a project and they are responsible for driving in projects through various phases. Now, when you go through various phases, you will encounter many constraints. You will encounter many challenges. So he is the one who has a good idea on all the phases such as initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling and closing phases. So project manager is exposed to the project environment. He works with the team, works with the sponsors, works with customers and various stakeholders, understanding what are their need, requirement and expectations, captures them and prepares a project management plan. And throughout, we follow that project management plan and ensure what is planned and approved gets delivered. So basically, when I talk about on key items, what project manager deals with, these are scope, time and cost, followed by three other constraints, which is quality, risk and resources. These are the main areas wherein project manager focuses. So we can say that the project manager also shoulders the responsibility of entire project scope, team management, risk estimations handling risk responses throughout the project. It's an authoritative role which has an authority to ensure the project purpose and objectives that we are setting up in the beginning of the project. Moving forward, there has been a lot of questions coming in on different salary trends what the project managers can get. And there's a very interesting statistics what we have which gives us an idea in terms of number of jobs in different locations. Starting up with New York, number of jobs is to the tune of double one double six. San Francisco, 471, Chicago, 613, Washington, 566, Boston, 450, and the list goes on. Let us talk about of a salary which is starting up from $65,000. So if you look at this kind of a salary, there are about 32.71% of jobs in the market. Similarly, when I look at a second salary bracket, which is around $80,000, you have almost about 26.25% of the salary percentage in this. Then comes up $90,000. So the opening isn't of the percentage is going to be about 19.94. Then comes up $100,000. You have 13.43% of job openings. Similarly, when I talk about on the $110,000, the opening is in the tune of 7.65%. Of course, when you see a higher salary bracket, that would also mean good experience. If I want to compare the salary from India perspective and salary from US perspective, so we thought of coming out with an average salary to give us an idea. An average salary in a US of a person who is a project manager, and needless to say, I'm expecting the person to be PMP certified. Average salary in US is about $72,000. If I compare the same salary in Indian context, this could be somewhere about 1190505, which is about 11.9 lakhs. So if we are actually talking about entry level project manager, because the salary trend, what I'm sharing with you, this is the generic and average salary trend. Let us now prefer having a look at the salary trends based on different experience. And we'll start with an entry level project manager. The person who has a little experience, let us say that maybe about three or four years of experience and he starts with project management. So here is the salary reference for you. Maybe if I look at on our total package, we are talking about of this package ranging between $39,767 till $90,784. Of course, this package has few breakup starting with basic salary. So we are considering basic salary in the range of $41,401, which can go till about $87,694. 
we are considering few bonus depending on the different industries different organizations bonus ranging from 498 dollars to about 10117 dollar and we are also talking about of a profit sharing which ranges from 305 dollars to about 9648 dollars so if you look at the compensation it could be maybe ranging from 1260 dollars to 25081 dollars all put together i would say broadly between 40000 to 90000 so that's an idea about the entry level project manager let me assume that you have some more experience and i'm considering you as maybe about mid career level mid career would mean that you have already been exposed to the project maybe about 7 to 8 years kind of an experience let us look at the salary trend and i'll call that as a mid career project manager so if you look at compensation here the basic is now going to be at 50778 and if you remember the entry level people we were considering that in the range of 41000 so there is tentatively an increase of almost about 20 percent here so salary in this case which we call that as a mid career project manager ranging from 50778 dollars till about 106103 dollar bonus almost i would say the two times of what we have seen it before so which is about 985 dollar and till about 14489 dollars similarly on a profit sharing we are talking about for 295 dollars and 10437 so profit sharing value remains more or less the same and then comes up to the compensation which is 1005 dollar to about 24747 so profit sharing and compensation more or less these two columns are pretty much similar but the base salary and the bonus has a big difference so this comes out to be somewhere in the range of 49657 dollars so let us say that 50000 for our ease and going until about 112,540 dollars so that's a good jump in comparison to what we have seen it for the entry level so if i look at a total package i consider that as a jump ranging from 15 to 20 percent and i'm sure you also have a curiosity to know about maybe a person who's very good experienced project manager and let us say that his experience is ranging between about 12 years to about 15 or 18 years and if i consider that as maybe one of the third category of looking at salary trends that sounds even more exciting so i'm considering now an experienced project manager with the experience ranging from 12 years to 15 years a person with that kind of an exposure can expect a basic salary of about 55850 dollars till about 122768 dollars and if i look at a bonus maybe it could range from 986 dollar till about 17899 dollars profit sharing would not be as high as it used to be in the previous two stages so it's going to be maybe ranging from zero till about 14737 dollars and when we look at a compensation this would be in the range of 1008 till about 25584 dollars so on the whole if i try to add up all the components i realize a person with about 12 to 15 years of a project experience and of course i will also add up a word called as a certification maybe from pmi so this person can actually expect a salary ranging from 54 to 31 dollars till about 138 31 dollars so that's the kind of a salary which you can expect from maybe an experienced project manager now what happens in a lot of cases is that there are people who get into the project maybe at a later date but at the same time they also have a huge exposure so what i'm referring here is i'm referring about one more category so far what i have discussed with you on a category number one as entry level project manager number two as mid career project manager third category as experienced project manager and now i'm talking about of a fourth category which talks about maybe a late career project manager the person who have got into the project management a little late but he also carries a great experience so broadly if i look at the package here and the package in an experienced project manager more or less it is going to be a pretty much similar but there could be an increase of about three to five percent wherein the person who has been exposed to this would have a little more package in comparison so if we try to understand on same breakup of their salary maybe considering the salary in the entry level first which is about maybe 57615 dollar if we consider that as the base package ranging from 57615 to about 132032 and then maybe looking at a bonus of about 962 dollar varying till about 20348 dollars and then looking into the compensation part which is about 1009 dollar till about 28938 so if i try to kind of a sum up on all this 
this value is going to be getting in somewhere close to $59,000 and it will go somewhere about $150,000. So that's going to be the tentative value what we can look at for people who are in the late career project manager. Now, we have got a good idea on different salaries of people at different brackets. Let us try to understand on various skills what are expected to be in a project manager. Let us start with the first skill, which is called as communication. Project involves many stakeholders, which could be at the same level as project manager, which could be people below the level of project manager, which could be above the level of project manager. So dealing with the people at different authority levels, at different hierarchy levels would need a communication and communication would differ from person to person depending on their seniority, depending on kind of engagement we have with them. So in nutshell, if I have to look at 90% of a project manager time goes in the communication and integration. So when I refer to this 90%, there is one more interesting statistics which says when two people communicate with each other, 55% of the message gets communicated through body language, 38% gets communicated through voice, pitch, tone, and about 7% which gets communicated through text. I hope you understand the statistics. Indirectly, I meant when you are communicating, the face-to-face -face communication carries the most effectiveness, followed by the other various means of doing the communication. The person who is communicating must understand that the message what he is trying to communicate is encoded in the language which can be best understood by everybody and he has to also ensure that there is an acknowledgement coming in of the message which will ensure there is a interactive communication going on between the two. Then comes up leadership. Leadership skills are pretty much important which talks about of motivating team, elevating them, boosting their energy, boosting their efforts making sure the team grows up from current level to the next level and leadership also talks about of handling various situations and using different forms of leadership. Sometimes it is good to involve people to take the decisions. Sometimes there are situations wherein project manager will have to show a leadership role and he may also like to decide on his side. But I would prefer more you engage with people, better it is going to be. When people feel like involved in decision making, the commitment from people is pretty high. So when I talk about of a team management, this also refers on the similar lines saying when the team comes in from different backgrounds, when you start working in your project, you may need to direct that team. Once they start working on the job, there is a possibility of some conflict in between. If that's the situation, you should be working as a mentor or a coach to make sure they get the right guidance. When the team understands that ego clash won't take them to a longer way, attitude clash will not work out. And when they start understanding that complimenting is the best thing and competing may not work, if they come to that situation, the leader must support that kind of team. And going forward, you can actually start delegating more items to them. So my role, which started from a directing, would move in from a mentor as a coach to supporting, to delegating, and maybe once project comes to an end, my role will go towards more of thanking, acknowledging, appreciating the efforts made by the team. Coming to the negotiation power, negotiation is like pretty important, which could be with various stakeholders. Negotiation could be from functional managers, which project manager has to have. It could be with team, it could be with vendors, it could be with various stakeholders. This does not always mean the money as the negotiation. There could be many other things which could be talking about of our contract terms, early joining of resources, payment terms. So there are many aspects. Money happens to be one of them among all. Then comes a personal organization. So when a project manager demonstrates that he is organized, he generates a lot of signals and we agreed that 55% is the body language, 38% is voice switched on. So if you practice what you preach, that makes the kind of an impression pretty good on the team members. They would understand that you have structured everything. You are following it. You are using time as means. You are very punctual. You are delivering the things. And at the same time, they get a very clear cut message that you follow the timings. So that's something to make sure we are organized in our personal space as well, office space as well. Then comes up the last line item here, which is on the risk management. Risk management talks about of identifying what the risks are. The risk can be a positive or risk can be a negative. A positive risk is called as an opportunity and a negative risk is called as a threat. 
So when we talk about of handling the risk, we should pay good importance to both threats as well as opportunities. And the key guideline for managing the risk is very simple. It is hovering around two words called as probability and impact. If it is a negative risk, I must try reducing either probability or impact or both. I'll give an example. When you buy an insurance, let us say that you have bought an insurance for maybe your car. So what is the purpose you are buying an insurance? The purpose is you want to have the impact reduced onto you in case the vehicle meets an accident. So the cost of repairs will be transferred to an insurance company. So what are you handling probability or impact? Yes, you are handling impact. Similarly, let us talk about of the positive risk. That means an opportunity. If your organization wants to open up in a different country and you realize that especially opening up in a different country would be a challenging task and you thought of working into a franchisee model or in partnership model with another company who has a base in the country where you wanted to start with. So in such scenario, you are actually trying to leverage on the other company's presence in that country and you don't mind sharing portion of your margins with them. So when we are talking about of a positive risk, I will again relate my answer in two words, which is probability and impact. And I'll say if it is a positive risk, if it is an opportunity, always try to look at increasing the probability or the impact or both that will make sure that we are handling the risks very well. So that's a key understanding on handling the risks. And I expect these are very important skills a project manager should have. We are getting more questions and the questions which is pretty common is a question saying what are the job description or the roles of a project manager. Now this will vary depending on what kind of an organization I am in, how much of the experience I have. So let us look at the various roles what is expected from the project manager. To start with project manager is the person who coordinates the internal resources and who is also coordinating the stakeholders. Then, as we said, he has to ensure that the project follows the scope, time and cost. So we can say that he is ensuring that there is a timely completion of the project and within the scope and and within the budget. That means we have very clearly mentioned that handling the three constraints, which is scope, time and cost is actually going to be the key role any organization would expect from the project manager. Of course, there are some add on responsibilities as well. But if I have to choose just three out of the big list, scope time cost handling would be the one then comes up the defining up the project scope and objectives that means very clearly noting down what are the different requirements then talking about on how do you prepare a project management plan how do you ensure compliance to the project management plan ensure that you do regular project performance tracking using various tools systems and if at all there are any challenges you are open to escalate and report to the management as required and of course, you can always go ahead and take their approval for taking up the change request. And the purpose of change request could be threefold. Number one, it could be a preventive action. Number two, it could be a corrective action. Number three, it could be a repair action. What you may like to trigger with the help of change request. So when I look at the job description or roles, so these are few of those job descriptions and roles. And we have few more to share with you. Let me share with you the other roles what we have, which is in continuation to our previous slide, which talks about of managing the relationship between the customers and the stakeholder, ensuring that we are managing the risks, ensuring that we are also having a good stakeholder management, especially the vendors and principals and the other organizations which are working on this project with us. So that means people outside of my organization as well who are part of this project then comes up uh, tracking the resource availability and talking about of resource allocation. OK, and end to end, needless to say, I expect project manager to also be responsible for creating and maintaining the comprehensive project documentation. There are many documents in the projects which are very important for project management plan for charter for performance tracking for confirmation that the performance stands delivered and most of these documents are basically the formally signed documents and they are supposed to be part of my organizational process asset. They're supposed to be archived when project comes to an end and they're supposed to be used when the project is progressing. Got it?
So this was uh, an idea on the project manager job description or roles. Okay. So hope your queries pertaining to the salary, pertaining to the various skills, pertaining to job description stands uh, addressed. And uh, now let me touch base on another interesting query what you guys generally have been asking for. And that's what are the items we should include in the project manager resume. So when it comes to the project manager resumes, there are many things what we can look at in. Let us look at one sample resumes, which talks about of uh, a person who has uh, the certifications as well. So if you look at the tagline, the bullet line, the headings, very clearly talking about of the person's name and especially the certification what he carries. I'm sure you you know a very good saying which says first impression is the last impression. So in the first go, I'm able to understand, hey, this guy is an IT project manager and he's certified in project management as well, carrying a lot of certifications such as PMP certifications, Prince 2, CAPM. So these things are eye catchy for me. And when I'm trying to look into any of the CV, this is what which matters a lot for me. OK, now let us look at few more items. So if I look at CV, it covers up experience very clearly. So you know that on the left hand side, there is an experience written. When I talk about on education, it is also written very clearly. What is the skills somebody is carrying the certifications, the languages, the softwares, the skills. So what we'll do is we'll try to get into each line item one by one so that we get a very good uh, picture on the different items of the resume. To start with, let me look at the first thing first, which is on the personal information. OK, so if you look at on the right hand side portion of a CV, it very clearly captures the personal information. So what are the personal information? First thing first, the full name. Yes, that's written. Then we talk about on the latest phone number, which is working. Then we talk about on email address, because if somebody has to communicate, at least this CV is giving straight away two options to me. One is the phone number and the other is the email ID. And if I wanted to understand more on this profile, of course, I have a LinkedIn profile also here. So you are giving an opportunity to somebody that if somebody is interested in your profile, they can always go and click on your uh, LinkedIn profile and get to know more details about your professional certifications, your engagements. OK, so this is the first thing what I would prefer in a CV, which is very much important to mention that on the first page. Second thing which talks about on experience. What experience? If I look at an experience here, it very clearly gives me a message. Experience starting from year 2006, December month till present. And if I compare as on today's date, it gives me a very fair idea that this guy has a pretty good experience as on date what we are referring to. He's also clearly mentioning his position. What position he's mentioning? He's very clearly saying that what designation he has and where is that he's working now. So this is also coming up very clearly with this profile. OK. And when I look at on the other information which is mentioned here, which is on experience, it is also giving me a message that he has been working in many projects so far. The organization name remains the same. However, his designation is changing. Hopefully when I read the inside line items, it also gives me a very fair idea on the various jobs he has been doing within the same organization. And more interesting, if I look at the words which are mentioned below, they are talking about of lot of statistics. So for example, if I may pull your attention on one line item here, which very clearly says, he has been working to cut costs by 32% in less than six months. So I would say this is a highlight what he is trying to share it with us. If I look at the second highlight, what he says is reduce the cost of IT maintenance by successfully rebuilding the server infrastructure, resulting in over $50,000 of annual savings. So basically, this guy is very intelligent to put forward the two major things he has done at here and both the major things he is very clearly specifying with the help of statistics and the data points. So basically, he wants to sell his CV very clearly telling that if you hire him, he has a mindset of looking into the efficiency reduction in the costing and at the same time without compromising on the quality of the project. So these are pretty interesting way of putting your profile forward to others. And I'm sure with just a, a small explanation here, you would have got to know. Now, if I need to look at the similar thing, this guy is again talking about of again bringing down the cost by 
and you don't tell me which organization would not like to have savings in the expenses right now he is mentioning another figure saying maintained the user database of our 30000 patient so this is also a statistics depending on what scale of maybe job you guys have for him and similarly if i actually go back and look into the, his first experience what is mentioned here it also says that this guy has resolved over 200 issues related to it he has prepared over 100 infrastructure performance analysis and report that means he's good in monitoring and control he's good in delivery so these are various selling points i would say he has mentioned that in this profile got it so that's something the way you can put forward on a lot of things like this let us now look at beyond the experience what we have mentioned and beyond the performance the personal information next thing i have is the skill so various skills what we expect from project manager that could range from technical or non technical we may not expect the project manager to be technical expert at all point in time but we expect him to have a broader idea on the stream or the technicalities of the line what he is handling which may include maybe things such as project management software project management methodologies frameworks reporting stakeholder handling team building resource planning time management time scheduling cost assessment budget management review monitoring conflict handling policy knowledge so these are few of the many things what could be important for us to look forward maybe in the technical skills of project manager so i again repeat it may not be required for project manager to be the expert in terms of the technicalities but he should have a broader idea on the technicalities of the project having seen the technical skills i'm sure you have a curiosity to also look into the non technical skills let us figure out on what are the non technical skills expected from a project manager few of these skills we would have already discussed in one of the slides when we mentioned on the skills of a project manager let us understand what are the skills expected from your profile so if i look at the skills here and look at some of those skills mentioned in the cv on my left hand side you may like to mention some key skills from here such as leadership such as relationship building such as collaboration with various team members problem solving critical thinking active listening negotiation information gathering so these are some of the non technical skills we expect from the project manager and let us also have a look on the cv now which talks about on the various education and then the certification somebody has so if i look at on an education it talks about of maybe first to start with it's the software which mentions skills such as microsoft project microsoft excel skype trello evernote jira so these are various softwares which will help in enhancing the communication with various stakeholders and nowadays not knowing any of these people would not be comfortable in recruiting you so these are certain things which you should know of course you may not be an expert in each one of those areas but at least in some of those skills you will be an expert in some of those areas you will have a moderate knowledge but good to have some knowledge on each of those areas okay now look at the education which is also very much clearly visible in the cv itself so if we refer this sample resume it very clearly says master of computer science bachelor of computer science so qualification is very clearly seen so we get to know that what kind of educational background this person has if at all you have certain certifications which is highlighting those education do mention those certifications as well so what are those certifications i'm referring i'm referring to certifications such as pmp certifications such as certified scrum master cam such as pmi acp which is uh, agile certified practitioner such as six sigma ppm pmit so there are a lot of certifications and they should be prominent uh, very clearly so when you are able to put forward those certification people can understand on what you want to communicate and maybe pictures can say many things about the person on a profile and when we look at on similar things from different people it will be good for us to do a comparison understand what kind of knowledge somebody would carry and certifications generally comes in with respect to the knowledge you carry and when you are having a certification that means you are proving this to the world that you have written those exams to achieve those level of certifications and i'm sure you know that most of these certifications are globally renowned and once you get that certificate and you are continuing your journey to learn more it creates a pretty good comfort from a project manager perspective 
to handle different arenas. And of course, when I'm referring the CV, it creates a very good impression in terms of somebody who would like to look at my profile or a CV. So this was all about on the certifications. And if at all, I'm going to be summing that up and asking another question to you saying, finally, what are the personality traits of a project manager? Starts from sociability, goal-oriented, you should be proactive, you should be open to inspect and adapt, and you should be able to train yourself, you should be confident, you should be committed to take up the tasks, you should be predictable as well at the same time. So these are some of those few traits which we expect that the project manager has in the personalities what he's carrying. And there is an immense need of people who are having those skills and certifications. And there are many organizations which are consistently hiring people having those kind of a skill set. Example of this is maybe Intel, Amazon, Philips, CGI, Facebook, Microsoft, IBM, and list is going to be pretty big. So this gives us an idea of maybe kind of the certification we should have, the qualification we can have, and how we can present it to others. And how should my CV reflect each of those line items when we talk about of the skill set required for a project manager? So with this, we are coming to the end of our uh, session. Okay. So with this, I wish to thank you for joining me in this session. And uh, to give you a fair idea, we, we as an Edureka, we are a global REP delivering project management certifications of PMI, which is PMP certifications. And we have many programs which are running for the project management professional certifications. Do visit our website or maybe feel free to call us up for the trainings suiting to your requirement. We would be happy to assist you. Thank you so very much. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!